I would like to welcome you um, to our webinar entry um, into ETF trading for Europe Union citizens, um, because it's, I think, a very important uh, topic, how to trade uh, ETFs um, as a citizen of the Europe Union. My name is Christian Walter, and um, here we will see the uh, legal disclaimer. Um, as you all know, this is um, not any advice for trading or um, anything regarding strategies we want to give you just an overview of what is possible um, and a few options uh, how you can play with the ETFs, um, also with US ETFs. And if there's anything, feel free. We have a chat function on the um, right side where you can ask questions. You can also contact us um, later after the uh, webinar. And um, I hope um, we can also give you some material after the webinar um, so that you will have all the documents uh, which are needed to uh, get into the ADF markets. Yeah, my name is Christian Walter. Um, just a few points uh, to myself. I made a diploma in business and mathematics, um, working for TradeStation in support since uh, 2004, mainly for the German market, now also for um, almost um, whole Europe, and also a live trading coach for stock and um, option trading what we will also have um, yeah, some points later in my presentation. Yeah, there are three, uh, sorry, there are five important facts. Um, six, sorry, <laughs> it's um, to um, get started. What is an ETF? Um, we want to show you um, which you need to know for the beginning. Also advantages and uh, disadvantages. Um, as well as um, which types of ETFs uh, are available at the moment. And I think a very important fact, uh, what will also bring us later to the cost st uh, structure, um, is um, the regulation stuff. Um, and also, what is the um, possibility to still have the chance to entry in, in US ETFs? Um, there's still a way, and we will uh, show you which ways uh, are available here. Just a second. So yeah, for the advantages and disadvantages, or let's get back to the um, um, topic before, for the um, exchange-traded fund, I think at the end is like a normal investment fund. The difference is that you can trade it direct at the stock exchange and uh, you don't have to buy it with the um, broker or the emittent. Um, you can just trade it as a normal um, share or a normal stock. What makes it much more um, um, cheaper for you in terms of commission instead of going to your broker or your bank because um, mainly in Germany, there's a lot of fees if you uh, invest in funds. Um, for example, if I want to invest like uh, five or 10,000 euros, uh, normally there's like um, a fee in the beginning of 2%. Sometimes they will take 5% as a management fee. So it means you just lose 5% for nothing. And uh, in this term, ETF is much better because um, you can direct trade it at the market. There's not that much high fees. And a very important fact, what makes it uh, um, so um such a good product for like also small investors uh, that you can um participate in like um, indices with a small amount of money um because of when you want to trade the whole s p 500 um and want to build it as a own portfolio it's like uh, it's impossible with a small portfolio because you can't buy like 500 shares um also like you can of course do it uh, via future trading this is also possible but still um, the ETFs um, are one of the um, cheapest uh, um, ways to do it. And um, to let you know what are the two biggest uh, um, ETF brokers, we have um, iShares, uh, it's a company, a sub company of BlackRock and also Vanguard. Um, so later when we see an overview of all existing ETFs, you will find out that iShares is uh, um, the market leader 
Um, you will find a lot of um, high volume ETFs for all different indices and um, also commodities. Um, so this is um, yeah one of the biggest uh, provider of um, ETFs. As I said earlier, um, you can buy and sell them directly at the stock exchange, what makes it um, very transparent um, and um, also low transaction costs. So for example, um, if you want to buy 100 um, shares of the SPI, um, it will just cost you $1.50, what is like uh, really a low commission here in this, uh, in this term. Um, and only, yeah, you have to do one trade when you want to have like a whole portfolio of the S&P 500 um, to um, stay at this example, you need to buy like uh, 500 different shares, what makes it um, much more expensive. Main disadvantage for me is the lack of transparency um, for some providers, uh, not all of them, but um, this is a topic uh, where I want to show you also later some uh, more details because um, this affects uh, mostly us as European Union citizens, um, as long as you work as an individual client for companies. Um, yeah, it's a little bit uh, easier, but uh, this topic we will see later on um, our presentation. And of course, we will also go to the TWS and the trade station to uh, give you like real examples um, in the live trading um, hours, how to um, use this information um, for yeah, selecting the right ETF um, and um, for maybe also long-term investment um, for ETFs here. Yeah, we will. Um, oh, there's five different ETFs uh, which we um, see on our screens, like bond ETFs, uh, industry ETFs. So especially if you want to participate, just not in the whole S&P 500, just of the financial um, sector. There's an S&P 500 financial financial sector um, ETF, also commodity ETFs for gold, oil, um, silver, everything um, is also available um, for commodities and um, currencies. Also a very interesting thing, if you don't want to trade the real Forex market, you can also do this uh, with currency ETFs. And um, what's also, I don't want to say quite new, but um, inverse ETFs uh, is something what's like um, not used um, that much. So. Um, for example, if you want to participate in a um, down moving market um, instead of short selling um, um, stocks or ETFs, there are also ETFs uh, who like um, um, have a positive um, outcome if the market um, goes down. And uh, for example, you see here um, the symbol um, for um, S&P 500 short ETF and the tree in, the, in front means it's like leveraged. Um, so, for example, if the S&P 500 will drop for 1%, this ETF um, will um, um, increase um, of um, 3%. Um, so, this is uh, normally written also in the description. Um, but we can see this all later in the uh, platform itself. So let's go to the next slide. Um, here, for example, um, what I told you earlier, you have an overview of all the biggest uh, US ETFs and um, the ETF with their highest liquidity. And this is um, for stock for the stock itself, as also like the um, options uh, which exists for the SPI. Um, it's crazy. Like we have a volume, um, average volume of 160 million. And you see the second one also from the provider iShares, it's only here with 9 million. So this is ahead of everything. Um, I think every one of you knows it. Um, the S&P 500 ETF from BlackRock or from iShares, the most famous, I guess, and um, in terms of volume, the highest, uh, what you ever um, will find here in all ETF selection. But for the same or for the other provider, what I told you earlier, Vanguard, there's also an ETF. Um, it's the same. Uh, you will also see, let me erase the rest, that um, percentage-wise, there should be not a big difference. The iShares one is a little bit better in terms of performance. 
And this is also something um, what you can check. We can also provide you some, uh, some useful links um, like you see it here, um, where you can check all this information. Because in the end, if you want to participate in the S&P 500, um, and you want to choose like uh, which ETF should I select? There are like um, some facts what you should check. I mean, in terms of percentage, um, as you can see, it's not a big difference, um, but they also pay out dividends, um, what we will also see later. Um, there we, we will also provide you a link where you can check how much uh, dividend or what's the dividend in percentage, what they will pay out and um, only for the cost structure what we will also see later in the slides um, there's normally not a really um, useful information where you can see all this um, but yeah we'll come to this topic um, as well later in this uh, meeting so these are the most liquid um, etfs for us and on the second page we will see all the etfs um, for europe but these are also ETFs, what's very important, which are listed in the US. Um, even they, they will um, show the um, moves or like the indices of Europe. Um, as long as they are listed in the US, um, um, they are all not easy or not available for trading for Europe, Un yeah, Europe um, citizens, Europe Union citizens, sorry. Um, so these two lists um, are including all ETFs what um, for you as an European citizen um, are not tradable at the moment. So if you are um, located in uh, Switzerland or United Kingdom, that's not an issue, um, but um, for the European Union, it's, um, yeah. it's a regulation issue um, where we are not able to trade all this, um, uh, or let's say not in an easy way, because I will show you later how you still can do this. So coming to the cost structure of ETFs, uh, there's three important um, um, things. What will make the total cost? Um, for example, expense ratio, um, commission and spread. And um, two things are really easy to, to check is the commission and um, also the spread. So it means like um, spread, everyone knows, I guess, the difference between the bid and ask price. So this is something what is also useful for you um, before you try to invest in uh, any ETF to always double check what is the difference between um, the bid and ask price and also related to the price itself. For example, if there's a spread of 10 cent, in absolute uh, value, it's not really high, but when the ETF itself only costs four dollar or four euro, then 10% is more than when you have 10% um, for ETF, what's like $200, for example. So this is some uh, something what you should be always aware, because at the end you pay spread twice for buy and sell. And um, if you trade it like more frequently, it's very important to um, check these um, spreads and commissions um, as you are a customer of Interactive Frog or TradeStation Global, you have one of the lowest um, commissions from um, all brokers. So this should be um, not a big uh, issue. The expense ratio, that's something um, yeah, what you have to check from ETF to ETF. It's a little bit different, but I just want to show you an example for these two things, um, um, what I marked here, the commission and the spread. And especially the spread is something um, what should be also a criteria for your selection. Uh, for example, if you want to build a long-term portfolio with some um, ETFs for different indices, um, and you have, as we seen earlier, um, a lot of different uh, ETFs for the same indice, for example, um, you can use these um, facts for choosing the right one or the right one what is matching your um, your investing style and um, there we will also see some examples later when we go to the trade station and the trader workstation. So cost structure, um, very important fact for the next topic as well um, because the next topic I think is the topic what um, normally not everybody who gets new into trading 
knows. Just here another example um, for the, to the, the cost, um, the total cost. And for example, if we have uh, uh, ETF ABZ, you have an expense ratio of 20. It's just like a, um, um, an, an example um, for expense ratio and commission. And um, the spread is um, quite high. And then you see in total, it's much higher than when you have like, for example, um, another ETF where the expense ratio um, is um, um, a little bit higher, but we have a very low spread. Um, so you always have to check all these three informations. I mean, as long as you trade on the same platform or same broker commissions, they should not change, but spread always uh, depending on the liquidity of an ETF. So you see all these facts are um, connected to each other. Um, so if you check, for example, a volume of an ETF, it will normally also um, have an outcome or like an impact on the spread itself. So um, if you have a low liquidity, you normally have a very high spread. This is, um, it's normal. And I think everyone who's trading like um, other things like um, stocks, options or futures, they, they will also know it that uh, um, the volume infects the spread. And um, so if you want to make a selection, what um, is easily uh, possible, not only with the Trader Workstation or Trade Station, also from different websites, you can select um, really high volume um, ETFs. Um, then you should choose always um, at the beginning, the sum of the higher volume ETFs, for example. So now coming to the regulations for US ETFs. And um, I think maybe you wrote this earlier. You will find also the full um, uh, regulation things on our, um, um, on the website of Interactive Broker. I can provide you this link. Um, so if someone wants to check all the details exactly, it's um, showing there. Just a few, um, a few things what you will find um, in this uh, explanation in this uh, regulation at the end are written here um, what is important to understand um, what they try to do here it's at the end something what the Europe Union created um, to um, make the invest or to um, make investments safe for you you can see a European Union investment rules to protect consumers. Um, so this is um, the yeah, normal explanation for this uh, rule. And it was created to, um, to make sure that investors can compare the risk opportunities and also the cost of different investment products. And um, when they um, announced this regulation, most of the, uh, I think, mainly for, um, all of the US ETFs said like, no, we will not um, include this to our ETFs. So since that the, these ETFs are not tradable for European Union citizens, as is a, a European Union uh, rule or law. So it's um, since that not possible to trade all these ETFs who are not including um, this, yeah, we know we call it kit. Um, with the information regarding risk, cost, and opportunities. And this is um, something yeah, to make you as an investor uh, or give you some safety. I know for me it was also um, a little bit painful because I'm used to trade um, this US ETFs in the beginning. But as I told you um, earlier, I will show you a few examples how you can still do it or can play around these rules if you want to. I mean, we have a lot of ETFs um, also listed here in Europe Union, which are tradable. Um, this is also something which I want to show you here in this presentation. And it's not only about the US ETFs. There are a few um, ETFs from Canada as well, from uh, Mexico, and um, I think from Hong Kong, who have the same problem. They are not providing this information, and since that, they are not able for trading um, for you, uh, European Union citizens. Um, but mainly, I think everyone is interested in this uh, high volume ETFs, uh, which are normally, um, as I said in the beginning, ETFs from iShares and from Vanguard, which are the two biggest provider of ETFs um, itself. 
So I think now we are coming to the um, most interesting part, how to get along with these regulations. And there are um, three things how you can do this. Um, for example, um, everyone who is a trade station global customer or also um, just a regular interactive broker customer can, oh, sorry, can apply for getting this professional status um, and this you can do in your account management and i want to show you now how to um how to do it and um, what are the questions uh, which you should answer we will see it first here in the slide and then second on um on the account management itself a very smart and simple way where we will maybe need some more time later to explain this is via options because what is um, like totally um, weird, I would say, is that option trading on these ETFs, on all the US ETFs are still available. Um, you can't trade the ETF itself, but you can trade options on it. So um, I don't know if you have some um, knowledge about options, uh, it's really easy to buy um, an ETF um, through a um, short put, for example, or a long call. And in some ways, if you have the, um, yeah, the portfolio size or like the money to buy like at least 100 shares of it, it's even a smarter way to get it um, with like a premium what you will also receive. And this is something what I will show you later here in some examples, <clears throat> sorry. Um, and we will also do this in like more detailed presentations, more detailed uh, um, online seminars. Uh, where you will get this information um, also as a recording, a lot of materials, lists of ETFs, and uh, who's interested in this, we will send you some um, new dates where we will um, present this a uh, little bit more detail because in one hour it's, yeah, it's just possible to give some um, overview of uh, all the facts, but uh, when it comes to like, um, especially the, options um, how to get this with a short put um, or put writing um, is also something what you will um, see normally as a description of short selling a put and um, um, long call as well uh, this is still possible and you don't have to apply for um, anything if you are able to um, trade options um, then you can also use this way and i think the way what um, and normally everyone uh, wants to do in the beginning is to uh, use like European ETFs um, which are listed in the, um, in the European Union. For example, we have a lot of um, ETFs in Ireland. We have um, some of them here in uh, Germany. We have um, some of them in the UK. Um, the only issue is um, what we will also see later in some examples that they don't have this high volume, but for you, as a long-term investor, it's, um, I think, still a good um, opportunity instead of um, buying this US ETFs. So there's plenty of European ETFs available. You just need to know where to find them, how to get a symbol, and um, this we will also show you here. And um, just make sure if there's anything what you want to have um, after this um, webinar, uh, that you send us a short message uh, via email um, or um, also um, comment on our YouTube channel so we can provide you all these useful links, um, the presentation as well, and also some some workspaces, uh, what you will see later here in our um, TradeStation um, global platform. And you can easily implement the, these workspaces in your um, TradeStation. We have this list um, from, for example, all European Union ETFs. But let's um, stay on the first um, topic. Um, the first topic is um, the regulation via account management. And I think this is just the example of the account management of interactive brokers. So um, if there's any other broker you're using, you can also check this should be possible with all um, brokers that you can apply um, to get this professional status. Just it's very important to know if you apply for it as a professional trader, as a professional investor, um, you have to pay also the professional market data. And this is sometimes 10 times higher than the normal market data fee. Um, but we will also say this, see this later in, um, um, in the client portal itself.
sorry. Uh, then we just have to go direct to the client portal. I thought it was here included in um, the presentation, but this will just take a minute. Um, so if we are here in, <clears throat> sorry, in the Trader Workstation, you just go to account and account management home. The normal way where you access uh, your account management or your client portal, if um, you don't have the Trader Workstation open, you can also go directly um, through Interactive Broker website and um, there you will have um, the menu and here in the menu you go to um, account settings and on the right hand side you will find uh, what I was trying to explain this MIFID client category. So this is the important um, thing that you need to find in your client and your account settings and um, then click on it. So request to change MIFID category. And here you will see three um, questions what you normally, if you want to have it, at the end it's, uh, it will be reviewed by the compliance team and they will decide if you um, are able to get the professional status or not. And they will mainly also check, especially the second question I think is the um, important thing, what is um, not so easy for everyone to, to get, is um, that your portfolio exceeds um, half a million euros and um, I think that's your frequent trader of um, 10 trades per quarter is um, not this um, that, that high and um, also you should have some um, knowledge um, in some kind of um, yeah, um, financial sector. These are the three, three questions. If you answer them with, um, with yes, um, normally IB will take up to 24 hours to double check it and then you should see if you have this um, um, professional status um, the next day um, and then you're able to trade these uh, US ETFs what we um, yeah what we told you earlier um, here in the presentation. What is another way uh, to find out if these ETFs are available for trading? It's also quite simple. Um, for this we should go back to, to um, to the Trader Workstation first of all and we should open the biggest um, ETF what we are talking about earlier in the SPI, I mean the S&P 500 ETF what everybody knows and here you see it's a little bit um, small so you might not see there are two letters NT means not tradable and if you go there with uh, with your mouse, it should also show you the information itself. And um, every symbol who has this NT behind, you already know if you see this, this financial instrument is not available for trading. It's also written here. For example, if you use the Mosaic version of the Trader Workstation, you will easily see it. it's the same what we have here um, for this symbol um, and yeah, all these are not able for trading um, and the only way what I tried to um, show you in the presentation earlier is to do it um, yeah, with options and we can also do an example um, that you maybe understand a little bit more um, how to do it even if you're not like an option trader. I just want to give you a short example because later on you can see this uh, video on our YouTube uh, channel, so um, you can watch it maybe two, three times to understand how to get this done with, um, with an option. So there's SLV, the, um, the ETF for the silver price, um, and um, it's the same symbol here. You can see I'm not able to buy or sell it, it's like just financial instrument is not available for trading. So exactly um, what I told you, um, there's no option to place even an order. 
But now if we go to the um, sorry um, to the um, option trader, um, you will see here all options on um, the silver ETF. And if we go back, what is the price for silver at the moment? It's um, fourteen dollars, fourteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. So I can. Um, not buy it directly, like I said, but there's an easy way to do it. Um, if I want it, for example, for a cheaper price, um, I can try to get it for um, fourteen dollars. What you will see here in this um, options will expire tomorrow on the 17th of April. So you can see there's all weekly options. So I can always try to get it on a Friday if the price is lower than the strike price which I choose here. And as we see, it was 1488. Um, I can try to get it, for example, a little bit higher price on 1450. What you will think makes no sense because it's like I will lose 10 cent uh, or 11 cent at the moment. But you see here, for this, I get a premium because I, I'm not buying the put, I'm selling the put. So it's a double. Um, um, um the double inverse yeah, you can say so at the end if it's tomorrow below four, 14 dollar and 50 cent i get this etf um, exactly for the price and i will also earn this premium of um, 20 to 22 cents so what does it mean at the end we have this price where i will get executed for my put option and i get like um yeah premium from let's say yeah, we can calculate maybe without commission so we will say i will have um, 20 cents commission so in the end i have it for which price it's exactly so it's 10 cents cheaper than the price uh, what we have here at the moment so if you want to see it on a long term it's really smart especially in this uh, market conditions what we have now because there's a high volatility means you get a high premium on options, of course, it might be not working for a portfolio which is a little bit smaller and not on ETFs, which are like two, three hundred dollars, uh, because you always have to buy um, 100 shares. One put options is equivalent to 100 shares. Um, but you can see it's a good way to get revenues or to get like um, a premium. And you can do this um, actually every week. It's not only um, to get this uh, um, um, ETF. Also, after you have it, you can always write call options. Um, it's uh, the covered call, and uh, you get you can create a really um, regular income for every week. And I think, especially in this period of time, um, it's uh, it's a good investment. Uh, it's a good good investment style to generate premium um, on top of um, your positions because, like I said, the implied volatility is still quite high it's getting lower than like two or three weeks ago but i'm pretty sure we will still have this um, high volatile uh, volatile market um, for the for the next weeks or months it will not decrease that much we will not get back to a level like in december this will all take um, a, a long way so um, especially if you are a long-term investor and you want to create a portfolio you should really think about um, adding this um, investment style of option trading to your um, portfolio. And later on in the presentation, we will also see this is something where we want to speak about a little bit more detailed in the next week, because it's a very important fact um, um, what you might use for short term and long term um, portfolios and trading. So you should at least um, have some knowledge or some idea how this um, can or how you can benefit um, from this um, trading style so and to see that it's um, really possible and i'm not like uh, just showing you some numbers we can do this actually um, a little bit on a longer term period let's say for example this is two weeks first of may I want to have um, silver for 13 dollars so um, you see it's much lower than the actual price we can also check what was the last time we had here 13 um yeah this was here um on the 1st of april 
but really below 13 we had like um, the yeah the end of march where the five six days uh, price is below that so um if the price drops i can um, get it for 13 dollar and it's also smarter if you want to buy something uh, cheaper normally you should place a limit order with duration gtc um, so the order is valid for the next days so you don't need to check every day if um, you have to change your order and so on so um, this is the normal way i think uh, every investor try to get like some shares some etfs a little bit cheaper with a limit order but instead of um, placing a limit order which will not bring you any any benefit or any um, income um, with the put option i can do this even on a two weekly uh, two weeks basis i will at least um, get six dollars and this six dollars i will still earn also if um, the price drops not um, below this um, at the end it doesn't matter if it's uh, below or above this six dollar i will still receive so i just click on it and just to show you that's there we can buy two so you see from the status i get executed so for the option there's no problem and um, um, as soon as you get the etf what is still possible of course it must be possible because uh, any investor who is having this etf long time before this regulation um, from the Europe Union came, he's still able to sell it. So selling is uh, normally um, always possible. Um, just the buying thing, you can um, yeah, go over it with, um, with the short put options. And as I said, on our more detailed um, online seminars, we can also explain you how to make it a little bit safer if the price drops really rapidly like we had it uh, now in this um, crash scenario in March there's also something um, what yeah prevents you um, from um, like a really um, um, a big hit um, on the downside so you don't have to do it only with a short put option there are many other ways to protect your portfolio and to make as at least the entry price not so high but this is something um, where we will need much more time to explain this in detail. Yeah, for the margin, um, it's a very good question. I can go back. Um, let me check if the margin was displayed again. I will do it with the 12.50. Um, this is also a very important fact where we also will speak in two weeks in our on, <clears throat> um, last webinar um, online seminar here in um, april um, what is like benefit of margin and cash account but it's very important you can also sell put options on a cash account and the margin calculation is um, normally the following you can see here my margin impact Sorry, I can't highlight it, but you should see it here. It's uh, 230, 234 um, euro um, because my base currency is in euro. So um, this will be the margin um, impacts also written here in euro. But you should calculate uh, it a little bit uh, different because from the margin side, um, IB or TradeStation Global, no, at the end it's IB, uh, will calculate always, um, I think, 20% or something like this of um, the value where you should buy your, um, your ETF or your stock when this put option get executed. And to go back, um, what will happen if this put option gets executed? We have a price, our strike price of $12.50 and it's very simple we just have to multiply it when we I sold one so by 100 so at the end my investment will be exactly $1,250 so if I write this put option especially if I really want to invest in this ETF um, of course, I need to know the margin, um, but at the end, um, margin is uh, one thing. The other thing is how much money do I need to uh, really buy this um, ETF or this share? And in this case, it's exactly 
12 dollar 50 um, multiplied by 100 sorry so you have uh, 12000 and uh, 1250 dollars sorry um, but the margin itself as we saw it in the, the um, screen displayed is i think 20 percent of uh, what the um, um, the stock or the ETF uh, will cost you and for the calculation you also always have to um, check there are two different ways uh, Proco will calculate it if it's an out of the money um, option what is like 12.50 is uh, almost two dollar out of the money so it needs to um, go down two dollars um, to get in the money um, and it's different when I go, for example, for a higher option or higher strike price, um, what is like 15 or um, 0.5, because then you're already in the money and the probability that you get executed, it's of course much higher. So um, to give you an example, we will see the margin impact will be much higher on this um, um, on um, Put option what is in the money so let's try to make it a little bit higher let's try this again Yeah, this is at the money over which I know I choose 15. Uh, it's it's slightly higher. It's not much, um, but in the money options, uh, they will have always um, a higher margin impact than out of the money. Of course, the strike price is also something what matters, uh, but you can um, always uh, memorize like the 20% of uh, what this ETF or stock position will cost you. Um, and if you want, I can also send you some useful links for the exact calculation, because think about it, it's just approximately the um, the um, exact calculation you will always find on um, IB website or even on our website as well. Yeah, this is a, this is a thing um, with the options. Uh, there's only one option uh, equivalent to 100 shares. So um, for all the US ETFs, there's uh, the minimum of um, 100 shares. Yeah. That's correct. So this was one thing, um, how to still get invested in US ETFs. And I think for you, mainly it's interesting um, how to get like, um, um, like a list, I think, or like some information about which ETFs are available here in the European Union. And I would send you the link on this um, chat as well. So you also can have a look and also I will send you some other information in uh, via email as well um, as the recording at the end. So please check this um, website. You will see it here because this is, um, I go back because I already choose, chose like um, some of these. You should so we see it now on the screen. Um, ETFs for Europe. So you can also check here Asia and Pacific um, should be also possible, but um, mainly all the Europe ETFs you find here in this overview are able um, for normal trading. So what you can do, um, you can see here, you can see here Germany, um, let's also go to uh, UK. So if I click to UK, you will have a full overview of all the ETFs uh, which are listed in the UK on this uh, particular um, exchange. And even uh, if you want to know, like here, this um, gold ETF, where was it? Gold Bullion Securities, you can. Um, have a look what is the currency and what is the um, all the information where are they tradable so um, this is the easiest way to get an overview of all the ETFs what we will provide you and what we will um, do what I mentioned earlier in the TWS I think it's not easy to implement or to import or export um, a whole list 
but uh, this is something where the trade station um, yeah, comes in and will help you um, to have a good overview in the radar screen. So we will provide you a few um, radar screens with, I think, most of the important um, ETFs for Europe and for the US. And uh, we will see this also later in the screen. It's quite um, easy to select then some good ETFs from the volume, from the spread, because all this information and all the selection you can include in the radar screen. And I think this is something where, yeah, the full power, I don't want to say, but like um, you can see at least how powerful this uh, radar screen um, is and will help you uh, in types of um, yeah, selecting um, different ETFs. So let's make an example. What should we um, try first? Um, physical silver, for example, or let's check something what has maybe a little bit higher volume. S&P 500 um, ETF is symbol. It's here or if you want to have more information, like I showed, you just can click on it, copy the symbol. And here we go. OK, I don't have the market data for it, but still you can see the chart. We can also include some information for um, for the um, spread, uh, sorry, for the uh, volume in the chart itself. And here's the thing what I, I tried to explain you earlier. I think the market's already closed there. That's why this is not moving. But you should check like um, the spread between um, bid and ask. For example, we have here 3.00. Uh, absolute value is like looking quite high but if you compare it to the price of 4623 um it's it's a good spread uh, if it's in um, when the market is open still the same i think um this is something where you can easily say okay for investment spread wise it's uh, it's good and we can work with it and um for commission side as i said you have to check our website um i think for the UK, you have to pay like um, um, I think 0.12 percent of um, the value of your trade. So it's also very low, um, and this is a way how you can select uh, ETFs and include them all in um, in your watch list um, or also in the radar screen. What will be the next topic, which I want to show you here? Um, just as an information, because like option trading, of course, is not something what is only related to um, to um, the US. But for example, here um, for this um, European ETFs, you will not find for all the ETFs options. Um, so this uh, way to play with the options or to use this um, in high um, volatility is not so easy um, like um, in the US because mainly most of the ETFs there have um, options as well. But we can uh, choose another gold ETF from the German Stock Exchange. Um, it's for GLD. You can see here the um, IBIS, uh, what's the uh, Cetra uh, market. And for example, this um, ETF for gold, this is having um, um, put and call options, not that much from the um, um, expiration dates. Um, and you can't see here the, the price at the moment because I don't have uh, added the, the real-time data. Uh, but here the same concept is possible what I showed you earlier. So this related to um, to Trader Workstation and uh, what we are trying to build here for you um, in the Trade Station is a short workspace where we have, for example, an overview of uh, what I tried to um, show you at the beginning. US ETFs, as long as you um, 
will still be able to trade them um, with maybe this MIFID regulation or with the options uh, we will have one workspace only with US ETFs with all the uh, high volume ETFs and then on the second um, workspace we want to include all this Europe Union ETFs that you have also an overview of this because the very smart way is you can easily um, check the volume and um, yeah sort them by volume or by spread or by any other indicators um, um, because it's um, the point where the trader works uh, sorry the trade station uh, will show your benefits here um, because you can include any um, technical indicator and you can um, see for example um, on a daily basis the RSI which uh, of these values is oversold we will see the financial ETF for example is the the one with the lowest um, RSI on a daily basis. Um, you can also include this, for example, here in the chart. So we will have the same. It's it's in terms of everything um, connected to each other, really a useful way to play around um, and to find the right um, choice for your long-term or even short-term um, investment. And um, I think it's a good uh, idea to provide some more information um, this um, was exactly the information what I tried to um, explain you in the beginning. This is only a financial sector um, ETF. And here you can see what we expected even last week or a little bit earlier, what might come in the next weeks. We have this typical um, down move, what was everywhere in the whole market. Um, I think there was no difference. Then um, the correction. And now it looks like we are going to see the second hit, maybe not in the full industry, but especially in the financial market. Um, we are almost um, yeah, on the way to maybe test at least uh, this low, what we had here, and to participate in a whole industry. It's, uh, it's really a smart way to choose the ETF, I have to say, because um, if you um, want to play with the um, financial um, industry on a long term, which bank you should choose? Should you choose Citibank, Bank of America, or um, Wells Fargo? There's so many different ways. And an ETF um, is like, like a fund, investing in all um, different instruments or all different companies. And if there's one, I don't want to say getting bankrupt, but really um, having not a good performance, the whole ETF itself will be still stable. So um, for long-term investment, I think it's uh, it's a smart way to think about ETFs. And I hope I could give you here in this presentation some um, some thoughts, what is Im 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 important, how to choose this correct, um, because you also have to check um, when you want to choose it on a long term. For example, what about um, dividends? And um, dividends is something where I normally use, especially for the US uh, markets. Another website, what you might all know, because this is um, um, no big secret, I want to say, um, but it's a very powerful uh, website um, where you can get the main information what you need. Um, Finvis.com and let's check the SPI. Um, there you see exactly what I was talking about. Dividend absolute is uh, $6.26 and it's still um, 2 Point uh, twenty-five percent of dividend per year, and um, as we said in the beginning, if there are like two, three, four, five ETFs for the same indic indice, um, just check which are like what about the performance, what about um, dividends, what about spread. So you can choose your selection, and especially if you want to do it on a long-term period, I think it's necessary to take some time to choose the right ones for you. Um, because um, if you want to hold it maybe for the next three, four, five years, because it's a good time to create a portfolio, like we explained it in our last video um, last week, um, you should check all these details in the beginning before you really start um, to invest. So this related to the dividends, and um, yeah, as I said, um, these are the main facts uh, which uh, are really important uh, before you get started. 
I know it was just a very short overview about some details and some things, uh, what is possible with the trade station and with the trader workstation and um, how you can start in this um, environment of ETF trading. Um, but as I also said, we want to continue, of course, um, with more detailed webinars with also some longer recordings of uh, three, four hours where we really start from the scratch, like showing you first things and how to um, yeah, create a trading plan, something like this, what we also showed you last week um, and um, also in our upcoming um, events in the next week. And this is the, not the last thing, but almost the last thing I want to show you um, because next week, as I said, there is um, trading setups for volatile financial products and volatile financial markets, I would say, uh, what we are now having here and which will be there, I think, also for the next um, couple of um, um, months at least, as it looks like, um, it should not get so stable uh, very soon. And um, that's, uh, that's the reason why I think it's a very important fact at the moment. And also, um, and the uh, last day of April, we would um, make a presentation uh, regarding cash and uh, margin accounts. What are the main differences? Because we got so many questions in the last uh, weeks uh, and um, it's good that people are um, careful at the beginning. Normally, they should or they start with a cash account, um, but it's really necessary to know. Um, you can also change it every time. It's not a big issue, um, but to know which um, strategies you can trade, which are the restrictions in uh, cash account and margin account, and then you should decide uh, what you want to do. Um, and this is um, also something what we would like to present you um, in the next weeks. Yeah, so thanks for your uh, attention. I hope uh, you enjoyed this webinar. Um, if you watch this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel so you can also see the next um, ongoing uh, topics. If there's anything from um, the information you saw here in the presentation you would like to have, send us an email. Uh, send me directly an email to zwalter at tradewola.com. Also the workspaces for TradeStation, we can provide you with an overview of all the ETFs. We also have a handout with like really detailed information, not only like the headlines, which I presented here in the PowerPoint presentation, what we can also um, provide you for free. Just send us an email and we are happy to um, have your thoughts about it and maybe also some topics you might be interested um, for the next weeks and uh, months and you will also see this all on our website itself. So the last thing I want to show you that you can see these all on our website, um, tradewola.com and there's in the seminar section. Yeah, you will find this um, all here. And you can register also for the upcoming webinars as well. So yeah, I wish you um, a good evening, good week, stay safe and hope to see you soon in uh, one of the next dates um, till the end of April. Thanks. Uh, and sorry, if there's any question, of course, I will stay here the next 10 uh, minutes. So uh, feel free to contact me via um, chat function. If um, there's maybe something more, we can also set up a call for the next days or you can send me an email. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.